That was a real testimony to his power as a director. You know, he took that exact same track and somehow got you to sort of see it different, you know, or feel it different. So, yeah, that that was cool. You know, that was really interesting to do. So, <laughs> but yeah. When you had originally recorded the song, um, you know, and then you're shooting the scene, the the backup singers at the time, was it actually Cheryl Lee and Yeah. And Morpho? Oh, so yeah, they went in and actually recorded it. <laughs> so it's it's their voices that we're hearing in the Oh yeah, return. that's oh. really them, yeah. And that's oh, okay. them in the return too, yeah. Wow. In the background. Yeah. <laughs> um I have, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Blue Rose magazine. They're kind of uh the new day wrapped in plastic. Um they actually sent me some questions for you guys for the magazine, if that's cool. Okay, um, for Sherilyn, uh, your scenes were very self-contained from the rest of the story. How did you approach your scenes and give so much of yourself to them when there is very little context present? Well, again, I think it has to do with the way I approach work, which is, you know, it's about um, the extent to which you're willing to reveal your soul. Like, my imaginary version of how messed up I am isn't nearly as potent as the real version. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, I know none of you are messed up, it's just me, but, you know. <laughs> I don't have a problem saying it. It's, this is a crazy world, we're all doing the best we can. Um, yeah, it, I, you know what, I, I was happy, I was scared, I threw it, I, I you know, I went, th ran the, the gamut, and she's really obviously going through some messed up stuff, um, <laughs> especially when she says, you know, I don't know who am I and all that, it's crazy. I mean, I just dove in and I was grateful to have good material and that's what David gives you. And, you know, the other thing, I can't remember why it came to me, something that somebody was saying, but it's like David will almost live with that thing of, you know, and um, I believe it's in Japanese culture when, when, when a pot breaks, they fill it with gold and the more it's broken, the more beautiful it is. That's David, that's David. That's what's beautiful. What you think is your flaw, what you think is ugly, what you're hiding is like, no, oh, that's, that's your gold because in that is truth and is, is wisdom and is wonderful things. And society tells us to do the opposite. That's why David is such an anomaly too. He's like doing it really in a different way. You think it's ugly, you think it's ugly? It's not ugly. You know, how do you perceive? Maybe you thinking only this is pretty is ugly. Mm -hmm. So I just, yeah, and I feel like it, he's so abstract, it's hard to go, uh, 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 but you can feel it. And there's something there that's authentic. There's something that's real. That's something that pulls you in, that begs you to look. Because a movie ain't gonna do it. it. It has to be a self thing. So I was taught that way and then to meet him, literally at a time when for the first time I walked into an interview and was myself, which was shy and not very communicative, and then he wrote me a role. So that's who he is, it's about truth, and it's not what the world tells you is beautiful. Uh, Harry, uh, Blue Rose Magazine wants to know, you become a hero for NATO and the only person uh, chosen by the firemen to be given information. To you, is this a new side of Andy or has Andy always been a hero? Always. Always. <laughs> always been I say always, but yeah. of course it's not. Harry, any thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think he was a hero. I think he was always right because he was so naive and he was so good that everything worked out because he was good. But in the end, I think there was some bravery that emerged because of circumstances, maybe not inherent in him, but came from somewhere. So he was different in that respect did what had to be done. <laughs> but he's a hero because he's, he had, the, he had the strength to always show who he was and to show his emotions and to show that authentic person. 
that's a hero. He's Instead of this, itself. yeah, this this person that's you know trying to act on that's not real power. Power doesn't behave that way. Authenticity, heart. That's why, yeah. I mean, that's my dream. <laughs> what Cheryl then then said? Because <laughs> Andy's no chat. No. No. Uh, James, uh, Blue Rose Magazine wants to know. The scene that resonated most with original fan. Oh, we just did that. I already asked that. Okay, oh, there's a second part to that, though, was uh, it seemed like James was able to redeem his past with that song. Do you think James has finally found peace? I, I don't know. I think uh, it's, I think he uh, basically is uh, at a place where he's um, sort of that, yeah. I think, I mean, I think that's what kind of comes off is that even though Kind of like what you were saying about Harry, like being, um, or rather Andy being um, just authentically himself. I think James was sort of, he may have started to even go down a strange road, but I think he was, whether it was, again, people who haven't seen it, I won't say. So, But whether it was what has gone on with him or whatever, he's sort of got blasted back to what he originally is even more so. So he's, yeah, I think he's really, you know, very uh, authentic in that way and and just stays he just stayed himself to the point where he just you know became like you said i think there's a piece inherent in how he wrote him this time he just stayed sort of just was being literally just being like you know not no expectations no agenda and just be so yeah um i had a, a couple fluffier questions um uh, i'm sure you get asked about it a lot harry and kimmy uh, but I wanted to ask about shooting the Wally Brando scene. Um, because in my head, there's like hours of footage of outtakes and, and, and people breaking and um, any sort of slice of, of that story of shooting that scene would be lovely. Well, we all had dinner um, first, uh, you know, outside um, where by the ruins of the mill and Michael Sarah was uh, saying, I'm kind of nervous, and asking how David shot, and <laughs> Harry and I said, oh, you're gonna love it, you're gonna just relax, you're gonna, which never works with an actor, <laughs> and um, that's a good way to make him get more nervous. <laughs> and <laughs> So, comes to uh, the nighttime, and we're outside, and it's really cold, and everybody's shivering so if he was nervous and shivering we didn't know because it was so cold <laughs> but he he said okay let's do it and we did it and david said well i love it and he came up and said dude that was just amazing yeah, right on <laughs> aces <laughs> <laughs> uh, harry and i were those smiles were real. Those were real. He was our son. <laughs> <laughs> a son like that. <laughs> and that cool, almost Marlon Brando, but right. not lilting <laughs> lyrical to the right, to the up and down, unless there's clouds. Whatever he said, that was just so cool. I mean, right there, that was a, a piece of Lucy. To be specific, um, don't get, don't let my poem mislead you, because if there is clouds, the shadow won't be there, obviously. So, I mean, and then the stuff with the, I don't know, but so then he goes, well, should we do one more just in case and. Michael Sarah looked at Harry and looked at me like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> because usually on a set, and I've said this before, so sorry for being repetitive, they go, well, that was great. I loved it. So let's do it again. <laughs> and then take 14. Well, that was great. I really liked it. Let's do it again. <laughs> and it's like wasting time and it 
makes you hate everybody. <laughs> it's, it's almost like that's where the devil is in that section. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> so Michael Sarah didn't know what he meant when he said, want to do just one more. And I finally I said, he really means one more. <laughs> and um, so we did one more, and because I have a lot of stuff to remember. Mm -hmm. And um, he made him go really, he said, Do, take your time this time. <laughs> and you know, the first one was like, hello, Sheriff Truman. I mean, so he goes, but this time, you know, really take your time. <laughs> <laughs> and so Michael Sarah thought he was in, had died and been in heaven. And because then you get to, as an actor, sort of be in the scene, really, like, and really enjoy it and stretch the time out and the love gets bigger and David's smile gets bigger and it was, the feeling was so neat. And then he came over and he said, well, unfortunately, we got to do three sentences over so I can get the shot from behind Sheriff Truman's ear. <laughs> and he said, I'm just going to have you start and I'll cut you off. So he had him say some, like one sentence and cut. And he goes, well, that's a wrap. Everybody, Michael Sarah is wrapped. And he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 Two and a and a 16th cake. <laughs> Amazing. So that was spectacular. <laughs> Somebody I know was recently in a car with his wife and she was talking about um, how much he enjoyed it and why, um, why he wanted to do more if there was ever more because he had never experienced anything like it. She would she didn't know that this person knew anything about Twin Peaks or anything. And uh, she said, he heard that, oh, I better not say this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing for maybe in the future, like in July, perhaps. <laughs> oh. um, and then the other question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, this will be a good way to... <laughs> Uh, so, Twin Peaks rejuvenated in no small part due to fan support as well. Um, in a fantasy world where fan support could also bring back another project you've worked on, uh, be it television or film, um, again, in a fantasy world, uh, which film or television show that you've worked on in the past would you be tickled if they brought another like another season of Eerie or Indiana? No, or? the fans brought the show back. The fans. That's not a fantasy. That is real. And and David Lynch directed it because of the fans. That was absolutely 100% the whole reason. Oh, yes. I'm just saying if there was another of your projects that you had done that you would want that same fan support for to bring back. Like, say, in a fantasy world, uh, we are all like, I need another Last American Virgin, or... But it's not a fantasy world. I'm telling you, it's the real world. <laughs> <laughs> well, then the real world, then. All right. I was, I, was a, I was in a movie called The Real World, and then they changed it to Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. So I think that. When I would be the president <laughs> of the QED report. <laughs> No. What, <laughs> Me? Yeah. Sure, everyone. Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't. I, the fact that this all came back, I couldn't even imagine. You know, that's the thing is, uh, it, it, I, I couldn't. I wouldn't even put it there. Sorry, I didn't turn off my thing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, <laughs> this is so unique unto David, I think. You know, and I, I or uh, another great like master because. Um, and, you know, I mean, I've worked with some really great people, but I think this is his thing. You know, I think I always equate it to Jimi Hendrix. I love Hendrix, but I think if, if he were alive, Hendrix would put something out and people would, or Mozart would put something out and people would respond and everything. And I haven't worked with too many of those, just David. And, you know, so I can't, I really can't even imagine. But to answer your question. Hendrix coming back could be 
That would be my fantasy. <laughs> Jimi Hendrix coming back and going yeah. to watching them. There you go. <laughs> yes. I, could, I couldn't imagine another, another project. This is so big and beyond anything I could have hoped for it's, or even thought to have happened that, you know, that's, that's where it lays, I think, so. Oh my gosh, so I would selfishly say, um, this show I did called Rude Awakening, Woo! which was so much fun about this alcoholic who got sober but was crazier than ever. And um, it was one of Showtime's first shows and I had a great time doing it. It was a comedy workshop and nothing like this, but, um, but yeah, I liked it. It was fun. Harry. Harry. <laughs> I would like to uh, do Jason Reimer's figurehead again and like to see a collaboration between John Neff and my new best friend Tony Visconti doing the soundtrack mm -hmm. and that's what I would like more than anything and for it to be shot in black and white. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, kind of on a, well, not quite on those lines, but uh, are there any, now that Twin Peaks is wrapped for now and we're moving on, um, are there any projects any of you guys have that are in the pipe that you're excited about, or what's next? For me, there's just uh, one little project that I'm sort of hoping goes good, um, film-wise, hopefully, and there's another music thing that I'm attempting. So I'm kind of in the middle of it, so I have no idea, really, other than that. Um, to be honest, there's two things. This world of conventions is a completely different animal of anything I've ever Ever, that's been very difficult for me to to deal with the emotions and there's been a lot of fake things happening that apparently is part of it. Not, not the fans. Yeah, not I'm you talking guys. about the promoters. Yeah. Not, and not necessarily them. I'm actually speaking of the, the agents the world of it. The agents that uh, <laughs> want to be, want to make money from the actors. Mm -hmm. And that, I have to say, I, I don't like those people. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like everything is just fine without them. <laughs> and everybody's happy and doing their stuff and there's not a bunch of rules. So, I've been working on trying to make that uh, more normal by actually sort of telling my agent off. <laughs> <laughs> that was huge for the mouse to say something. But, uh, and then I'm writing something because my manager wants me to because then he doesn't have to do any work. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a uh, book coming out, a fine arts book, uh, but, uh, you know, just from coming from this, there's nothing I would like more than to actually do something with us four in, in any capacity, and uh, preferably shot in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Possibility. I did a recurring role in SWAT, which is coming out now. And I'm shooting a movie in Portland when I leave here. And like I didn't work most of the year and then all of a sudden things came in in the last few months. Um, and I'm doing a role in um, the new, a new series called Titans, which is like these superhero things, but I'm like a mom. <laughs> it's my favorite thing to be even moms in real life. Are I, amen. He said moms are superheroes. <laughs> so we're all just, you know, plugging along, trying to, you know, find things that inspire us and, and hopefully that continue to touch, you know, the beautiful people that you all are. Well, uh, we are out of time for today's panel. Tomorrow will be the audience Q&A, which I'm sure there will probably be some more well-formed questions than what I could possibly <laughs> ask you guys. Um, uh, I just have to say, you know, thanks to everybody for coming out today and uh, for supporting UConn and, and for coming out uh, for these guys. And thank you so much for coming to this show. As I, I was a 14-year-old boy when I watched the show, 
I remember sitting on on the floor of my parents' house for the, for the pilot, and the first few notes that came on the screen just transported me to that place. And like I've been there for the last 27 years, and I know a lot of recognizable faces out here have too. So thank you so much for coming to this thank and for for doing this with me. One more thing. <laughs> you know, I just want to encourage everybody because a lot of people have questions about what things mean. And I just want you to know, David, it means what you feel it means. I mean, he really wants to take you on a journey into you. It's not about like most Hollywood films where they wrap up with a little bow and everybody gets what they're doing at the same time. And it's like, ugh. <laughs> Whereas David, you're hitting your head. What does it mean, you know? <laughs> but if it touches you, even if it makes you angry, if it, you know, that means something, the bigger the reaction, the more personal the material. He's a highly spiritual man, you know, who goes deep. And like when I was telling him I was having all these problems, he gleefully said, Gerald, Ben, you're a mess. You know, you need to, you know, you need to meditate. You know, but he likes that because then you're you're showing where you are. You can't get out if you don't deal with where you are. So there's no answers. It's just whatever you got. And some of you have had the most profound, amazing, mind blowing theories. Reasons for I was like, oh my God, I never thought of that. Some of the writing. Absolutely, <laughs> it is because where you can go within yourself is more brilliant. He only wants to take you there. That's all I got.